please welcome to the show, Heather Debro. How are you? Hello. Are you, you know, it's so funny. I was going to ask you, do you drink coffee? Oh, yeah. Well, I drink two things in the morning. I drink, I wake up and I drink matcha okay. tea because <laughs> here's the problem. Well, here's a problem with matcha. I mean, here's a problem when I go to like coffee shops. Yeah. Every matcha, no matter what coffee shop you have, is pre-made and they have tons of sugar in it. Oh, is that so, right? Yeah, it's horrible. It's like 36 grams of sugar. So I, a funny story, I was trying to lose weight. Yeah. And, but me and my wife loved the matchas from Starbucks, never looked at the sugar. We were drinking like two to three a day, getting like <laughs> 72 grams of sugar a day. And I was like, I'm working out. I'm not losing weight. I literally cut out their matchas and I lost all the weight. I That's cut out crazy. sugar. That always reminds me of like, remember, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember when Chinese chicken salads became like the thing. And it was like a diet food. Like here's your Chinese chicken salad, but it had fried wontons and the dressing and like it's all, the worst. all over it. And it's like a 7,000 calorie salad. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Most salads are horrible for you if you get them at a restaurant because they put all their dressing on it and all types of things. Like the only way you can make a salad healthy in a restaurant is to just get the salad and then put the dressing on the side. That's the only way you can do it. Totally. Or bring uh, your own. Terry always jokes that I see a menu as a list of ingredients. <laughs> yes. Not really as a complete menu because I eat like very, very plain. Me too. It's fuel. That's yeah. all it is, it's fuel. No, but I actually, I'm not like anhedonic like that. Like I know there's some people that see food as fuel. I actually really enjoy food, but I ridiculously enjoy it very plain. Like I like a steak and I like a baked potato and I love french fries, but like, and I love pasta, but I don't like lots of saucy things. Yeah. Well, and you know, complicated things. Well, the sauce is the thing that has the most calories in it. Like yes. just eating the meat in the in the in the salads, it, it's great. Like that's how I stay lean. Is just literally one meat and one salad, and then sometimes I won't even have the meat. I'll just do, you know, I, I my friends are like very in very good shape, and all they eat is Chipotle, and it's crazy because they can eat so clean at Chipotle. Because they're just having vegetables and lean protein. That's basically, yeah. you know what? That is basically how I eat. But I have to tell you, hormonally, not to be TMI, but at this stage of my life, it's very difficult to stay like uber thin like I used to be. And nor do I really wish to, because I think my face looks better, a little heavier. So I kind of I kind of like where I'm at. Like not in a bathing suit so much, but in life, I like Wait, it. Wait, what do you like like if you don't mind me asking, yeah. how much over the weight you would want to be that you are now? See, I'm not really hung up on the number, but I understand to quantify. Yeah. I would tell you that um, I'm probably like seven, eight pounds heavier than okay. you know what I was a few years ago, maybe six or seven pounds. But on me, I kind of have a small frame. So yeah. even though I'm tall, I'm small. So, so like six pounds on me is actually a lot. And your face was a lot thinner? You said before, uh, you can, or I mean, is it just something you can tell? Uh, well, I'll tell you this. Like, as you get older, like, look, gravity goes down. There's not a lot we can do about it. hundred percent. So the thing But you is, got Botox to keep it up, girl. Come I on now. That. Listen, I do enjoy Botox, and I get some Sculptra when I'm super, super thin in the hollows and here and here, but I was sort of blessed with good cheeks and all that. I don't get filler, but here's the thing. Like, fat is natural filler, so... If I have six or seven pounds extra, the face is fuller. It just looks better. If you get uber thin, it drops. You know what? I just uh, got Botox an hour ago. And oh, he looks oh yeah. So, you know, I have a very strong forehead because uh -huh. I'm a comic and I have a lot of expression. In my forehead. So, but what it was doing was wrinkling up. Yeah. And she said, my forehead is so strong. Actually, it comes from the top of my skull. Like my muscles are all the way up here. Is that so they, they the have to, shots? so no, they don't do it here. They shoot it way at the top. Like, yeah. because if they shoot it here, it'll fall. Yeah. And I have a very strong like brow. So, and I had a, a great lady in LA named Melissa. Uh, she owns Honest Dermatology. Went to her, tons of celebs, went to her for years, moved to Vegas and you have to find a, a new person. And right. it's like dating. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. I went to the, 
hot person that was in Las Vegas. They were just very like, you know how people like don't care about your feelings when they're putting in the, like she was just oh, like, yeah, bam, yeah, bam, yeah, but, bam, bam, it, bam, bam, yeah. And it hurt. And yeah. I went to this new lady, I found this new lady and she's great. She sits down, she talks to you. Ah, oh, and, and she's the best. And uh, you like this your was my- You like your a little bit, my girl. I do. That's I okay. Do. I'm okay. No. I like yeah, that. I, I like I like knowing what you're doing and if you have a plan for my face. Not just I walk in, oh you I see it right here, here, boom, 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 get out of here. This woman was like, here's the plan, and yeah. you need to come back every three to four months. And I'm writing all of it down. And you know, in Vegas, what's different from LA is you can buy individual units in LA for your face. Right. Here, you have to buy like uh, a a big number like from 60 to 100 units at a time oh so you there so what it's so you, say you only need 40 so you got 20 extra some clinics you that's just your loss but this lady she actually holds the 20 units for not those 20 units but she keeps a rolling track right, where right, some right. people go you got to buy 60 no matter how much you use that's so interesting all right so i'm curious how you feel about botox because I, all right, so obviously I'm married to a plastic surgeon. He doesn't yeah. do injectables for years. You know, he just mm -hmm. does surgery. But when I first met him, he did. And that's when I started getting Botox. I was 27. And I was on a TV show. And whenever, when I crinkled my forehead, I got this deep line right yeah. in between my eyebrows. So he, I mean, I'm like a New Yorker. Like, we didn't do that kind of thing. Come out to California, everyone's throwing needles around. But I was like, okay. So I had a little bit done. And I was so happy because I ne that line never stuck. But here's my thing with Botox now. So you can see, like, I can raise my eyebrows yeah. and all of that. I don't like to be frozen. Couple reasons. Number one, okay. obviously, you know, I'm on television. I like to have expressions. And then also, I like my kids to know when I'm mad. I think that's a really important thing. And if you can't move your face, they really don't know when you're angry. <laughs> and then the other thing is, and this is what I'm curious if you feel this way, I find it a little bit claustrophobic. So I have them go very, very light. I'd rather oh. be more often and just have a tiny, tiny bit done because I feel like if it's frozen, which I did once a long time ago, I was so claustrophobic from it, I couldn't stand it. Uh, so I go, well, that was the whole point. Like Melissa at Honest, Honest Dermatology, I would go to her and she would do it light and I would go back a lot, like three to four months. So it's, you know, she said, it's like working out yeah. a Botox plan. As long as you stay on top of it, you know, you it, you won't get wrinkles. But if you're the type of person that goes to the gym once a year, then you have to catch up exactly. for every, and you can't catch up, and you I know? Also, yeah, I also think there's people out there and I've seen this, you know, with estheticians that we work with and stuff like that. There's, there's some people that want the most bang for their buck. So they want to be like overfilled, oh, over it's terrible. over everything because they think it'll last longer. So but then I think you look so weird. See, that's people look weird. like fishes today. It's in this uh, late female obsession with the lips where they're like, I you know, know, it's like that I've doesn't even look it. right on you. I never had that done. I like my upper lip, but when I smile, it kind of disappears. And yeah, so, well, but but what? I'm okay with it. It's fine. But you know what I'm talking about? These women that get the big lips, yes, like yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so unattractive. I don't get it. It's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. I don't understand it. Well, you but you know, my my daughter is turning. My twins are turning 18, and she wants lip filler. No, like I don't care what women do to their face. Just don't touch your lips, because to me, that's the fastest thing to make you look crazy. Well, like, it's the. But here's the thing: so she's turning 18, and at 18, you can now. Yes, I would have to give her money. I get yes. it, but, but she can technically, legally, do whatever she wants. 100. percent So you know, the choice as a parent, as always, you have to figure it out is, you know, how do you, how do you navigate that? So she's been asking for the last couple of years. And when, you know, certain celebrities at 16, 17, 18 years old are getting lip filler. And now the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, because of all that is like, yeah, it's probably okay. All of a sudden you don't really have an argument, but this is what I've said to her for the last few years. I'm like, well, when you're 18, you can make that decision, blah, blah, blah. But now TikTok, here we are. And, oh, there you are. Uh, here we are. And she's turning 18. So my choice is, 
to let her go off and do what she wants or at least take her someplace where they're going to be very light handed and do a great job. So what I decided was she doesn't know this, but her birthday's next week and I'm taking her for lip filler. Okay. I know this doctor very well, Doug Mass, and he's brilliant. And I said to him, I go, look, do the bare minimum so she can like just see it and see what it feels like and whatever. And then if she wants more in six months, you can like give her a little bit more. A hundred percent. So easy. Well, that's the whole thing is that if you're overseeing it at 18 and it's light, that's fine. But I just see so many women get carried away with it where it's great. And it's kind of like, you know, I watch the news now. Here's what's normalized now. And it's fine with me. I don't care what people put in their face or I don't care about plastic surgery. You know, it's just a part of life now. But on the news, it's so normal for people's foreheads not to move. Yes. And on television, it's just the way it is. You know what I mean? I'm watching the news and literally the only expression you get is from the mouths now from people on the oh, news. Really you, true. Know? you know, it's funny. I don't know if you remember this. I used to co-host Good Day LA a lot. Oh, yeah. I remember when everything, I know it's live news. And I mean, the lighting's great and everything, but it's different than like if you're doing a sitcom or, yes. you know, whatever. Anyway, and I remember when like high def became universally everywhere. And, and I was like, my gosh, how are you ever going to have a news reporter over 30 ever no. again, because you can see every pore, every, everything. It is like the most horrifying thing. It shocked ever. people. I remember the first time I saw myself in high def, I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like- I, but this is why I don't put filters on my pictures, because I don't want people to meet me and go, oh, wow. Yeah. And there yeah. we are. Now, uh, you said you got your face frozen once. Was yeah. that because you went to the wrong doctor or were you over, you were like, I want everything? No, I think it was just a little bit one time. It was just a little bit heavy handed and, and gotcha. you know, that's okay. And also sometimes your face reacts differently than it does. Mm-hmm. I don't really know. Like, I don't want to speak out of turn, I, but sometimes it just does. Um, but no, there was no doctor error or anything, but yeah, it felt so funky. So now if, when I get, and I really only get it done because it does work kind of cumulatively on me at yeah. this point. So I get it done maybe once a year, but I'll go just a little, just, just a tiny, tiny bit. I just want a tiny bit. Yeah. Now um, the trailer for your new show came out, Real yeah. Housewives. What'd okay. Yeah. So, so what'd you think? I, I saw the trailer and I love how you start the trailer. Thank you very much. You with your little sassy walk. I love it. I love it. So what do you think after you saw the trailer? Um, I was surprised that it it felt, uh, I mean, I liked it, but I was surprised they didn't put a lot of this drama that happened in, especially like Andy Cohen has been saying um, that the first two episodes like really start with a bang and they do. So I would understand not giving away things that happen mid to late season, but I am surprised they didn't heavily tease what happens in the first two episodes. But then, so at first I was kind of like, huh, is that, does it seem lame? And then I thought, well, I kind of like the fact they didn't give away the first two episodes, which is okay. cool. Because now people are going to be like, whoa, what just happened? That was like crazy. And you don't really see it coming. And it's cool. It's very, the first two episodes are insane. It's like, you know, the truth is stranger than fiction, man. You can't make this stuff up. So. So do you read the reviews of trailers, which I think is ridiculous, but um, do you read the reviews that a lot of people were disappointed yeah. in the trailer I, because, I, because there was no heavy drama in it? I read mixed reviews. I read... Um, you know, I got texts from a lot of news media people that I've known throughout the years, like, you know, enter, you know, um, Entertainment Tonight and Access and all the places. And everyone seemed to really like it. But I think um, I think that people in the business understand the assignment that was put out. And so yeah. they're they're seeing sort of the long view. I think some fans are just looking for the drama. But here's how I sort of see the season. It definitely starts with a bang. That is for sure. And it, I mean, and then you have six, seven, eight, nine episodes of recovering from this bang and figuring out the bang. So it's not like a one and done. And it's and it's serious and it's heavy and it's emotional and it, it tests a lot of relationships. Um, and so it's it it's really really it's great. 
But the way I see this season is the assignment was a reboot. That was mm-hmm. the and what I think the audience is going to get out of this season, yes, you're going to have the drama. There's also a lot of humor. There's a lot of really fantastic personal stories that happen uh-huh. here. And I think Orange County, as opposed to some of the other franchises, focus a lot on the girls' personal stories, um, as opposed to some of the other franchises are more group things. Um, yeah. And what I think is going to happen is I think the audience is really going to get reinvested in a lot of people and invested in people that they weren't before. And that I think was the assignment. And I think we we did it correctly. I was watching it and what I got from it, you know, I love you, but it seems like you're the mother of all the housewives. Like literally the tone is you're like, okay, children. <laughs> That's what I got from it. It's like, you're going to be the one kind of in between everybody's mess. Of course, you're going to have your own mess, but you're the one like, okay, can we work this out? This is what I got from it. Just the way you yeah. were positioned and things like that. It's true. And I think some of them will probably be um, poaching on me as such in their confessionals. I think the first time on the show, I described myself as the Greek chorus because I felt like, even though I, I was definitely involved in some things, but in my five years, five seasons, I wasn't involved in everything. But yeah, it was kind of like standing there in the middle, like trying to help and figure things out. I think that since I left and came back and anything that's happened in my life since then, I now, um, I'm much more relaxed. I think the first time on the show, I was so hung up, especially the first couple seasons, because going from scripted to reality at that time was not a norm and it wasn't really so accepted. And so I was scared. Um, Now I just don't care. And I honestly didn't care about what the other women thought about me. I didn't care um, who I was gonna be friends with. I was just like, okay, I've agreed to come back. Let me see. Well, I will just see what happens. This is like- You know what? what you're happens. like you're like the all-star that left the team, did the, you know, retire for a couple of years and you came back and nothing's changed, but everybody reacts to you differently, but you're like, oh, I'm here. Yeah. Let's go, you know? Yeah, I definitely feel more relaxed about it. And I have to say, you know, Aside from one sort of continuing theme throughout the season, which you'll see, which was very difficult to navigate, which we'll explain as it goes on. But aside from that, like I actually, I, there was a lot of fun to be had. One of the things yeah. that I, when, when people have asked me previously, like, what did I miss when I was off the show? Like, what did I miss about the show? I would always say that I missed the girls trips because that's just something I never did. I never took girls trips. That was not like my thing. Um, and so when I got on the show, I was forced to take girls trips because it was part of the job. And even though there was drama and all that, I always had so much fun because you were, it was part of your job. You had to go, you had to check out, you had to leave your responsibility at home. And I started the show when my youngest of four was nine months old. It was kind of nice. Yeah. So I will tell you, we actually, I ended up taking three trips on the show, two with the full cast and one with just a couple and man, we had a lot of fun. And you don't have to pay for it. The show pays for it. So that um, makes it even better. Let me tell you a little secret, Michael. I paid what? a shit ton. Can I swear? Is that okay? Yeah. I paid a shit ton of money. Why? Yeah. Well, let, let me tell you something. What? It, it ain't the way it used to be. First of all, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, budgets are not what they used to yeah. be. For sure. But look, here's the truth about when you do a show like this. You know, you're living your life and the show is following your life. So they don't just pay for everything, you know? Uh. You're, you're having a, a family dinner, they don't come in and buy your groceries, right? So let's start there. They yeah. don't do that. Now, if you are um, uh, having an all cast dinner or something like that, yes, they will pick up the tab for that. But certain events like, you know, we, we had a lot of, I had a lot of parties this season. They they contributed to one of them. And when you did your alma mater, I mean, that's something you were going to do anyway. So they're not going to pay for that. Exactly. So we went back to Syracuse and then we went to Manhattan and then, you know, and of course they picked up a dinner here or there or whatever it was. But I mean, I paid for the jet. I, you know, I paid for, you know, my kids. I, pay, I paid a lot of money. That's all. Now, that's all I meant. 
Now, are your kids going to be a bigger part of the show? Or, and did you was that a tough decision for you as a parent going, okay, I've seen what it has done to some kids and families, uh, but you're a veteran of that, navigating it. Do I want to put my kids into this or do I not? Was that a conversation you had with them? 100%. Um, so part of the reason why I wanted to come back, and I can't remember if you and I discussed this, but part of the reason I wanted to come back is because you know, Mike, I have these four very interesting, yep. very different kids who are different genders, different sexual orientations, and they're at a, all sort of at, at cool points in their life where they're figuring out who they are in this world and where they're mm -hmm. headed. And I, I thought, what a, what a cool platform to be able to show what our version of a normal family looks like. I have, so Max, you know, my oldest daughter, yep. this book, that came out last week, I'll give it to you straightish. And when she came out as bisexual, what struck me was, I mean, thousands of comments, thousands. And a lot from parents just saying, how did you handle this? I wish I had done that better. And it's it's interesting to me that after all this time and in this modern, quote, modern world that we're living in and how much more open we're supposed to be, that people really still don't talk about so much. And I thought, gosh, you know, Max is, putting herself, her, her sexuality, her anxiety, her, you know, her teen angst, all of this stuff out there to try to help other teens and parents navigate this period of time. You know, maybe we as a family could do the same thing. And without giving out too much, you know, some of my other kids share parts of their lives that, I, you know, I think it's really cool. And I think it's going to help people. Isn't it? You know what, I, I look at people and I'm just like a normal viewer, but we look at people like you and people that have a lot of money and we go, money fixes everything. Yeah. And then you realize with these shows, oh no, they got the same problems we have. Yeah, well, money doesn't suck. I mean, I'm not gonna no. lie, we're super privileged. And I'm so yeah. grateful um, for all of it. You know, we've worked hard in our lives. Yeah. No one's given us anything. You know, no one handed us a, a, a no one left us any money or yeah. anything like that. Um, so we've worked hard and, and we're grateful for everything we have. And we, gratitude is a big running theme in our house and our, our kids are really grateful. As a matter of fact, I was saying something to my son the other day, I, I, was, I was making fun of him. I'm like, look at you going off to the gym in your fancy car. <laughs> and he's like, that's not my car. That's your car. That's not my house. That's your house. He's like, I'll make my own way. And he's just, you know, they're pretty cool and they get it. But Money gives you resources. And so what I always say to our kids is one of the things that you're lucky about is you do have the resources. So if you mm -hmm. need therapy, if you need help in some area, we do have the resources to get that to you. But the most important thing is communication and love and staying together, right? So yeah. that is something that everyone can have. And so that's what we want to show. Now, I want to skip forward because, of course, you have uh, you just finished seven day stitch. Seven I mean, seven stitch. year stitch. Yeah. yeah. OK, so that show, when does that can you say when that comes out yet March or? 1st. Yeah. March 1st. OK, I mean, now what makes you more more? I mean, what gets you excited about that show compared to the show, you, the housewife show? OK, that's a great question. Um, housewives is, is emotionally very difficult to do. It just is. Um, like, like I was saying before, I think when I was first on the show, I was constantly trying to figure out what was going on, like it's a puzzle. But you realize as you go through this, like the moment you think you're smarter than the show, you've completely lost. Oh, yeah. And now, heading back into it, I think I'm smart enough to know and cognizant of all of that. So I didn't worry about any of it. I was just like, look, I can only be who I am, play the cards in front of me, and react to what's going on. And whatever else happens, I, I just, I can't control it. And as a control freak, kind of difficult, but I was able to, to release all that. But it still is a lot. And it is a lot of work. I mean, it's just, it's a lot. Um, with Seven Year Stitch, I mean, I get to work with Terry, which is very fun. Now, you know, we've written like three books together. Yep. We've got our skincare and supplement line on Shop HQ. We've worked together for many years as Dr. and Mrs. Guinea Pig and done segments and all this. But we've yeah. been trying to do a television show together like that for years. And we've come dangerously close many, many times. Now, Seven Year Stitch, 
has been on and off for the last two years because of the pandemic and you know, like everything. Yeah, just everything just off. shut down, yeah. What's really exciting, and, and I guess this is sort of a running theme because what I am excited about Housewives is, is honestly showing the family, showing the kids, and yes, to, I, I didn't complete the answer to your question, was we, we, was, we had a family meeting about it. It was definitely a group decision. Um, you know, whether to come back, 100%. Because if they had been against it, I couldn't have done it for many reasons. Um, but with Seven Year Stitch, just like Housewives, here we are. Uh, people call us couple goals. We've managed to survive the reality curse. Uh, December 7th is going to be the 25-year anniversary of our blind date. Oh, and, my gosh. Oh yeah. And we've been through it. I mean, we really, we've, we've had our ups and downs, good days, bad days, good years, bad years, you know, that that's what a relationship is. But we've learned a lot through those years. And what we talked about was, gosh, you know, if you could, like, if you had a couple uh, and, and you looked at them, you're like, well, you know what? Relationships are relationships. We've been there. We get it. Let us open up our Rolodex and use our resources and try to help other couples have the advantages and the resources that we've had and see if we can help stitch couples back together at that crucial seven year mark where the honeymoon is over and they're looking at each other like, what do we do here? Like, are, were we meant to be together? Was this a good thing? Was this a bad thing? And see if we can do some good and help. So uh, I want to move on to some pop culture things. Right. Uh, I know you love Britney Spears. We I talk about her a lot. So, so she's free funny. now. Yeah. How do you feel about Britney Spears being free? What's your take on it? I'm so excited she's free. Um, I really hope that she, I think this lawyer of hers is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you know, like when you start to build a team, you know, you need one solid good person and then you find the rest of the team based on that. So what I'm really hoping is that because I really like this attorney of hers and I think she's still with her manager, but I'm hoping that she rebuilds a team based on good people with good recommendations for her and that she goes cautiously and she doesn't have like, you know, white knight syndrome, like where, you know, now this is the most fabulous person, you know, cause we all go through that. Yeah. So I hope she goes slowly. I hope she does what she loves. I love that she's engaged. I hope she takes time does the wedding right, has a honeymoon. And honestly, I really do hope that she gets to perform again on her terms. I'm scared for her, to be honest with you. You yeah. know, I love, I love her. Yeah. I think she's free, great. Uh, but you, I think people forget where she was when she got the conservatorship. Yeah. You know, sure. where, I mean, she was running around uh, in Studio City on Ventura, shaving off her all over her, you know, People forget about that and they just look at the conservatorship. Did it go too long? Absolutely. Did the dad probably did some bad things? A hundred percent he did. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you look at her Instagram, it gets kind of weird sometimes. You're like, why are you doing that? If, if this is you, are you okay? You know, yeah. I wish nothing but the best for her, you know? And I Me just feel like she does need someone. Yeah. Not a concern, but she, I hope she has a good team or friends around her that can keep her. I do don't know. Like, I can see it going like sideways really quick. Do you like her fiance? I don't know a lot about him. It's hard to tell. He seems like a good guy, I guess, but I'm not in it. But it's just hard to see a person as big as Britney Spears and where mentally she is. Because remember, she was a kid when she became famous. And I think that affects you when you're an adult. So a lot of things, I, I say it about professional players, football players, or any player. From middle school, you have talent, so you're pampered throughout your whole life till you retire from football. No matter how much your money you have, you're like, oh, people don't care about me anymore. Right. You know? Like, you're the, oh, you used to be that guy. You know? Right. So then they grow up. Britney Spears when you have all this money and then you had a conservator over you for 13, she's really never lived her own life. So, so that's why you need good people around you. I agree. And what I think about with her is it's, and I think you're saying the same thing, but it's like arrested development because if you think yes. about it, so she, let's say she got into the conservatorship when she was 26. Was yeah. That? Something like that. Okay. She had two little kids. She goes in this conservatorship. So now she's under someone's thumb for 14 years. What if it's all, 
true, which it sounds like it is, what she's eating, where she's going. I mean, like down to like- How much neck. money she can have a month. Everything. I mean, that story about her not being able to have sushi at her rehearsal because it's too expensive and she's a gazillionaire made me crazy. But so when I think about my life in those years, from 27 to let's call it 40, okay? I mean, I met my husband. I had four kids. No, I had three kids at that time. I did multiple television shows. But but not only that, I went from, not to like quote her, I'm not a girl, not yet a woman song, but I mean, I really went from being like this, like 20 year old life, I have so much life to live, da, 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 to being a functioning adult with yes. responsibilities and figuring that shit out. She never had the opportunity to do so. So you're right. She went from being this coddled, pampered, indulged um, pop star to then this sheltered. It, make, it makes me think of that book, Flowers in the Attic. I mean, you, you can't develop. So now, of course, she seems weird. She was yeah. never had a childhood. She didn't have a young adulthood. She's like a girl woman with yeah. children who are teenagers, and she's probably at the same maturity level. Yeah, and, it, and, and that scares me. That's why I say it's nothing about, this is not about Britney Spears, a person. This is just how she grew up. And it's yeah. the same thing like you, you saw with Michael Jackson. Like when you're a kid star that big, and we're not talking about you were on a TV show big, and right. that was big in America. We're talking about you're a world star. Like yeah. everybody knows you. And your schedule when you were probably 13 to like 26 was just insane and you never lived. And then you got in a conservatorship. So you really never had your life. So now this is the first time you're like, oh, what I do now? And all I'm saying is, I'm rooting for it. And I just hope she has a good team around. And, and I think we're saying the same thing, so. Yeah, me too. What about Taylor Swift? And she re-recorded all her songs. Red's coming out on the 19th. Um, I think it's a great move because personally, I love when people take control of yeah. their own destiny. But at the same time, I don't think the record company should have sold back her music either. I'm that person, you know? Yeah, maybe not. But I, what I did think was interesting, I didn't realize that it was Kelly Clarkson is the one that told her to do it. Oh, I, just, yeah. mm -hmm. I just saw that resurfaced tweet and I was like, huh, okay. Could have texted her, put it out there, but okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I I have mixed emotions about the whole thing. It's like, you made a deal with someone, they own the records. Like, are, are you reneging on the deal? Like, is that a thing? Are you allowed to do that? Is that cool? I mean, the record company is allowed to make money too. So and I think she it. was upset because the record company sold it to Scooter Braun instead of her. And that's what? where that's when she got upset about it. But the record company can sell it to who she, whoever they want. I love that she took control of the situation though, and saying, "Look, now, remind me, why why did they send it to sell it to Scooter and not her? Was it just a little more money?" I'm guessing it was more money. See, then but Taylor Swift had tons of money that they, it would have made it back. So maybe they just didn't want her to have it. Maybe, like I'm guessing here. I'm just totally throwing maybe she left that record company and they had a bad taste in their mouth and they were yeah. like, you know what? Screw you. We're selling it to Scooter Braun. Well, listen, number one, never burn bridges. I mean, that's just yeah, gotta be never, never, never. all lifetimes. Never, ever, ever burn bridges. Cause you never know. Never know. You never know. And it's just not a good thing to do. So never burn the bridges. I, yeah. I don't know what the deal was between all of that, but um, if it, I, I don't know, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about the record company part of it, but if, if it's true that they just wanted to make a few extra bucks, and I thought I read recently that Scooter was like, I'm sorry I ever bought them. Yeah, probably so, because, you know, I don't know if you've seen the Taylor Swift Swifties attack people, but they're oh, relentless. They relentless. Mean. They are totally mean. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I mean, I like the fact that she did it. I think it's pretty cool, like you were saying, that she took it back. I think it's cool that Blake Lively you know, is directing her video. That's pretty awesome. I, how much do you love Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds? I mean, they I are, mean, they're amazing. They're amazing. What's so funny is, so I knew Ryan when the, he was on this show called Two Guys, A Girl, and A Pizza Place with- Was he on that show? Yes, it was him, Rich Ricola, and Trailer Howard. And I think did Tiffany Thiessen joined the show for a while. So we were at um, CBS Radford, 
And I was on a show called Star Graving Mad with Neil Patrick Harris and Tony Shalhoub. And we were across the way. Our sound stages were across the way. So at breaks, we'd all meet out in the middle and like smoke cigarettes or just say hi or hang out or go out afterwards or whatever it was. And yeah, so that's where he started. And he was so like goofy. And I mean, if you had ever told me he was going to turn into Ryan Reynolds, like he's Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. The I, sex I, symbol, everyone yeah, wants to be with. Yeah, it's, it's great. No, and I, lo I love Ryan Reynolds. Like, I think he's so good at what he does. And he's I think so over, since he did um, those, uh, what, what, what is it? Uh, what is his movie where he plays a Deadpool. superhero? Huh? Deadpool. Since yeah. he started Deadpool, I feel like he re really found his voice. Yeah. Like, he's so funny. And I feel like when you play this rom-com all the time, you can't really be that. But after he did Deadpool, I, this is him moving. Every movie now, he's that guy. It, oh, it's no matter oh, the role. Like, exactly. it's him, and I love it. Yeah, he found a way to be a cool superhero and, like, shoot it down the barrel and talk to the audience. Right? I love it. I love it so much. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you said December 7th, uh, 25 years. Is a person like you throwing a big bash, or is this an intimate night, or what? So, you know, we have two anniversaries. One is our blind date. By the way, the only reason I remember it is because it's December 7th. It was Pearl Harbor Day. So, like, it's like a day that you know. I mean, not yeah. that it's a good day. I'm just saying I knew the date. Like, I don't remember the day you proposed or our first kiss or anything like that. But that I remember. So, we celebrate that day. And then our, our wedding anniversary is June 5th. So, you know, we celebrate that. But, at, you know... I've never been one to have other people celebrate our anniversaries because weirdly my mom and when my dad was alive, like they were very much like that. Like as if we should be celebrating them every year. And I'm like, yeah. what is your anniversary, like you chose each other. You're, you married each other. Like why? Well, I don't You're know. Like, Whoa, you chose each other. Yay. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. I mean, I don't expect my kids to ever throw me like an anniversary party. To me, I love what we usually do on the seventh, but we can't do it this year because of our schedules. But usually we go back to the Ivy because that's where we have the blind date. So we'll go there. Yeah, so we'll go to the Ivy and we'll have dinner and we'll talk about our 25 years and we'll laugh or whatever. Okay, so how long did it take y'all for that first kiss after the first well, date? I didn't like him, full disclosure. And my mom told me to go on a second date with him. And I was like, okay. And then he didn't call me in time. So I blew him off. And then, so it was a while. I mean, it was kind of a while. I feel like it was, I don't know, maybe, I don't even, I don't remember the first kiss. But the You kiss, don't remember where the first kiss was? No, but this is the kiss I do remember. We had been okay. dating for like five, six weeks. And I really wasn't, I wasn't very nice to him. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I, I, maybe I wasn't like attracted to him. Like, he was great on the phone. We had great conversations. I really like thought he was so bright and interesting and funny. But when we were together, I was like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, we go out to the movies one night and he drops me off and we're in the car and he kisses me. And I was like, whoa, like totally different kiss. And I go up to my apartment. I was living in LA. I go up to my apartment. And he calls me on his way home. He was living in Orange County. And he calls me and he goes, do you know what kissing you is like? And I go, what? And he goes, you know when you're a kid and you wake up and, and you realize it's Saturday and you could go back to bed and you turn over and you find that amazing place in the pillow again? That's what it's like to kiss you. And I went, okay, that's, that's good. I like that. And you were like, you were all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up. We ended up, he was like, come down to Newport Beach, like away from Hollywood, away from your life, and you're gonna come see what my life is like. So I went down to his office and saw him like in the scrubs, which is hot, you know, yeah. seeing your person and their element. And then he invited me to go to Napa with him. And from the moment we got to the airport, we were a couple, I knew I was gonna marry him, and that was the end of it. So what changed? I don't know. I just can't tell you. Just seeing no him in his element, maybe? I know. I think it was that kiss. That kiss made me go, wow. Like my heart okay. beat. Like it was just very, it was like sexy and cool and, and connected. And then see, and then seeing him in his element. And I'm telling you, I don't know why, but when we got to the airport, it was just like we were a couple and we had so it's, much fun. You hear it all the time when you know, you know. Mm -hmm. It's the same for my wife. After our first date, about a couple of dates in, I, I knew. 
it was really quick. You just know that's your person. You just know. And what was so funny was we got back from, we went to San Francisco and Napa and we get back and we parked at the time. We used to park at the car barn, you know, the car barn. And yep. so I think it's called the auto spot now. It's fancier, but we parked at the car barn by the airport. So we went back to the car barn and he kissed me goodbye and he goes, um, let's never see each other again. And I go, what? And it was like the most perfect, like what? And he goes, no, because that was perfect. And it's like not going to get any better than that. So why don't we just, <laughs> let's just call it. We were laughing. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So now what is your world like? What is Heather's world like right now for the next month and a half? Are you chilling? Are you going into the holidays? What's no, happening? it's a, I am like on fire. Like I'm back to back to back. I was going to take off a couple of weeks off the podcast for the holidays, which I still might do, but I, I'm waiting to see what the housewife schedule looks like. We come out December 1st and typically they take a couple of weeks off it after they- Oh, they you gotta do promo for that. Yeah. Um, and so, yes. So I will be talking about the show on Heather Dubrow's world. So I don't want to miss any of those weeks. So I'm waiting to see what that looks like. But basically in between now and like right after Christmas, I'm going to New York. Um, we're traveling a little bit with the kids. We have a couple of little personal trips. I'm working a lot, um, finishing up some stuff for Seven Year Stitch. Still have uh, interviews for like confessionals for housewives. And um, the twins are finishing up their college applications. Wow. Max just got two interviews, uh, which is like a, like like follow ups to two Ivy League schools, which is super exciting. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, and Thanksgiving. The twins are turning 18, Coco's birthday, Hanukkah, Christmas, like all of it. It's just all on top of each other. Wow. Well, you got it going on. And um, you're going to do something with me, which I'm very excited to come by I your know. house. And we're going to do a little drinking thing. for. I'm hosting a New Year's Eve show on all the next star stations. So in the top 25 markets, me and this lady named Nikki Novak, we're going to do the ball drop on that. So it's going to be very cool. And we're going to have fun pieces with people like you and more. So. I'm very excited to do that. And I know this is like totally ridiculous, but I'm having foot surgery. On yeah, I know. I know you're going to think this is crazy, but I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. I know it's crazy. It's What's not wrong with your foot? This is so not sexy. I don't want to do this to you, but I have this really terrible bunion. And in weirder news, I need my toe shortened. Mm -hmm. I did say that. So you have long toes or something. What, what toe is long? Toe. One of the toes is too long, and then I need the bunion fix. And I've been putting it off for years. And I think because of the pandemic, I was wearing sneakers for a long time. And then when I started Housewives again, I was wearing high heels, and it exacerbated the situation. It's a disaster, and I just want to have it done because it hurts so badly. And I like to run and be fit and all that. And I have a little time and I'm like, you know what? So what? At the reunion, there might be a sparkly boot on my foot. I don't know. Wait a minute. So so do you have ugly feet? Do you have hammer time yes. feet? I have the most hideous feet ever. But here's the thing, Michael. God doesn't give with both hands. Like, I think the rest of me is not terrible. And if it, <laughs> be, if it has to be the feet, so be it. If there were plastic surgery for feet, I would be on the table in 30 seconds. I would love to have like those cute, adorable, oh, I would love to have cute feet. It's never gonna happen. That's okay. But what I'm looking forward to, and I think you'll understand this, is I get to stay home. Yes. For like a month. And you month. can't do anything. No. Very nice, very nice. Well, Heather, thanks for being on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. You know, I adore you. Let Send me dates for our segment. for the I know. I can't wait to come over and see the house and, you know, drink it up and have a fun time with you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm coming to Las Vegas. When? Um, This weekend. And for, and for what? This week? Yeah. And I'm leaving this weekend. You are? When are you leaving? I leave Thursday and come back Sunday. That blows. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm missing you. Oh, I'm so bummed. I know. We got concert tickets and, and for Friday, and I was like, let's just go. Are you going to Sting? No. Is Sting play? He was. I don't. I think he's still here. Uh, no, we're going to see Brian Adams. Oh, okay. Okay. And a lot, of, a lot of his songs are our songs. Oh. I know. It's so That's cute. That's nice. That's Good. nice. Well, next time you come down, but I'll see you in wherever you live before you come to, before I see you here. So I'm excited. I'm ready for you. I'm going to put right. up and everything. We're going to have a lot of fun.
All right. Well, have a great day. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, honey. Bye-bye.